A few days later, everyone was getting used to the idea of living on the island. While there were some days that were hot, rainy, cloudy, and even windy, they still managed to keep their survival instincts up. Things were going well for everyone on the island, although help was taking a long time to show up to save them. However, one night, where Grunkle Stan woke up to hearing some sounds. It was around 6 in the morning, and it was dark outside. Even though the sun was about to rise at any moment, Grunkle Stan can hear the sound of drumming. It was coming from somewhere on the island. He got up and left the hut, without waking anyone up. He took an axe to defend himself as he ventured off into the jungle. While he was walking deeper and deeper into the jungle, he could see the sky above him turning red and orange as the sun was rising. When he got to a clearing that appeared to be deep in the jungle, he could see that there was no one there. He looked around to see blood on the altar. It appeared to be an altar close to a campfire. Grunkle Stan instantly knew that this part of the jungle was dangerous and he didn't want Wendy, Dipper, or anyone that he's with to ever venture this far off into the island. Fearing that there are some dangerous people or creatures nearby, he ran off and came back to his hut near the shore. Wendy and Dipper were awake. They saw Grunkle Stan looking worried, so they wondered what happened. What happened, Grunkle Stan? Dipper asked. Yeah, did something happen? Wendy asked as well. I found a very deep and dangerous place on the island, and there's most likely people on the island or creatures. I saw blood on the altar close to the campfire. I have a bad feeling that something bad lives there, Grunkle Stan said. And we and I recommend that you, Wendy, Pacifica, and Mabel, to never venture to the deep and dark side of the island. Okay, we won't. We trust you, Dipper said. Then Mabel and Pacifica woke up and heard heard the commotion outside. What's going on? Pacifica asked, still half asleep. Grunkle Stan is warning us about the danger on the other side of the island and warns us not to go there, Dipper replied. What is so dangerous about that place? Mabel asked. I don't know, Mabel, but I have a feeling whatever is there is mostly dangerous, Grunkle Stan said to Mabel. Anyway, were we gonna go fit ready to go fishing dips? Wendy asked, getting the boat ready that they came on the island on. You bet, Wendy. And what do you have planned today, Grunkle Stan? Dipper asked. I don't know. I guess I'll find some food and stuff, Grunkle Stan said, sounding confused. We found a barrel of rum, Grunkle Stan. Pacifica and I brought it back here, Mabel said. Grunkle Stan saw the barrel that Pacifica tapped on, which was a few meters from the hut. Sounds like you'll be, I'll be drinking tonight. See you later, Grunkle Stan said, as Wendy and Dipper headed off to sea to fish. They didn't go too far from land, but far enough where they can catch food, fish for food. Any fish will do us. Hopefully no sharks will come, Wendy chuckled, then started to fish for food. Dipper then saw something inside, the water remembering that he had to get something for Wendy, since he won the casino no gambling. He took a hunting knife and dove in the water. While underwater, Dipper could see a school of fish surrounding him. They were friendly, and Dipper smiled at them. Then he... He spotted what looked like to be a chest of some sort. It wasn't too big, but it was about the size of a shoebox. Dipper lifted the chest from the sea floor before returning to the surface to see Wendy on the boat. There you are, honey. I was worried and wondering where you were doing down there, Wendy said, surprised to see Dipper overboard. I found a chest, Wendy, and since I won at gambling on the cruise ship, I had to get you something, Dipper said. Then he handed the chest to Wendy and put aside. Once Wendy placed the chest aside, then she pulled Dipper onto the boat. What is inside this chest? It's not too big or heavy, Wendy wondered. Well, let's open it to find out, Dipper said. Then he and Wendy both sat down and opened the chest on the boat. And when Wendy looked inside the chest, he found a necklace made out of pearls inside. Aw, Dipper, this necklace is beautiful. It's made out of pearls. Wendy spanked him as she put on the necklace, which the pearls shined bright. Since I won at the casino on the cruise ship, I got you that as a gift, Dipper replied. Then he kissed Wendy. 
Back on shore, Pacifica was making something with an axe and a hut. Mabel walked in with Grunkle Stan to see what she was up to, hoping that Pacifica wasn't too upset about help taking too long. What are you making, Pacifica? Mabel asked. I'm making some hunting spears, perfect for when we come across fish and other animals. Plus, it will make great weapons, Pacifica answered. I see what I did with the few spears. I made a sharp tip on in one of the sticks that I found. Then I used a vine to tie a rock on it. And then when I throw it at fish or anything useful for food, it will also defend us against any predators. How did you manage to make them? Grunkle Stan asked. I thought you didn't know how. I saw someone on TV do it once. I believe it was Tarzan, where I watched him make spears, Pacifica answered. Once Dipper and Wendy caught some fish, they headed back to their hut to get to cooking. Once the fire was lit up by Grunkle Stan, they began to cook the fish. Wendy was upstairs where she was, going to use her hunting knife to make something out of one of her clothes. Pacifica followed Wendy upstairs to the hut, to her and Dipper's room, wondering what she was doing. Wendy, what are you doing? Pacifica asked, catching Wendy by surprise. Oh, Pacifica, I didn't expect you to come up here. What's going on? Wendy replied with a question. Just wondering what you were up to. And what are you doing with that t-shirt? Pacifica asked. I'm ripping it apart to use it as rags, Wendy answered. Then she began to use the knife to rip apart her shirt. Why are you doing that to your shirt, Wendy? Pacifica asked. You aren't going to plan to wear it, are you? Not exactly, Pacifica. I thought of using this shirt by ripping it up to use it as rags. Like for bandages for when we if we cut ourselves, pads for when one of us is on our periods, and just about anything useful. Wendy replied. Once Wendy's t-shirt was ripped to shreds, Wendy placed the raggings of the shirt in a box where their first aid kit was. Pacifica sat beside Wendy, wanting to know how she and Dipper were doing. Let me guess, you saw what you did on you, what you did on TV? Pacifica asked, guessed. Yeah, that's how I know. My dad taught me when I was a kid. Wendy nodded. So Pacifica... Are you still upset about that help is taking longer to come? Why do you ask, Wendy? Pacifica asked. Just wondering, because I know that every day in the past you were upset, and I get that you and you have every reason to be. Our situation right now is kind of depending on when help will come, Wendy said. Oh, that? Pacifica paused, unsure of what to say. I'm not too upset about it anymore. In fact, I know we're all still stressed and even scared and afraid. I know that feeling. All we have is each other now, until help arrives. All we have to do is work for each other. No matter how hard times are right now, Wendy said. Last night, I kind of didn't sleep well. I guess it was the fact that this stress has really gotten to me. We are all feeling that way, Wendy. But the main thing is that all we know is what to do without Grunkle Stan's survival or... Your tips? We, there will be no hope for anyone on this island, Pacifica replied, breathing in the smell of the ocean air from outside the hut. How are you and Dipper doing as husband and wife? Oh, we've been doing good. The reason why we didn't have our honeymoon right away is because Dipper wanted to do something special, and that cruise ship was one we wanted to do. But then it got caught on fire, which brings us to where we are now, Wendy said. Do you ever wonder why the cruise ship got caught on fire? Pacifica asked. Dipper asked me that last night, and I have no idea how it got caught on fire, Wendy answered. I'm questioning myself. Who knows what caused that ship to get caught on fire? That, I am afraid, will forever be a mystery, Pacifica sighed. Wendy, Pacifica, you two up here? Dipper asked, peeking his head in his and Wendy's room. Yeah, we're in here, Dipper, Pacifica replied. Good. Grunkle Stan wanted me to tell you that lunch is ready, Pacifica said, before he, Pacifica, and Wendy headed downstairs to the kitchen. As lunch was being served, everyone ate the fish that Dipper and Wendy have caught with some fruit that they had found. Lunch was really good. As Dipper cooked himself, he was proud of himself for making lunch for everyone, one including his wife. After lunch, Wendy and Pacifica went venturing inside the jungle for some fruit. 
When Wendy saw bananas on a tree, she climbed up to get the bananas with her axe. When she got to the bananas, Pacifica caught the bananas as Wendy tossed a bunch of them to her. Nice throw, Pacifica said, as Wendy climbed down from the banana tree to meet with her friend. Thanks. So, Pacifica, I want to ask you something. Just don't get angry with me, though. It's nothing personal or anything, Wendy said. What is it? Pacifica asked. Well, you and Mabel didn't get along when you first met her. Why is that? Wendy questioned. I'm not against you or Mabel, but Mabel told me about it a few nights ago. I was confused, so I want to hear your side of the story. It's mainly about Mabel, I am asking, since you already know about Dipper before I got married. Okay. The reason why I didn't get along with Mabel is because she's always dressed as, like, like, clothes with happy unicorns. It looked very childish, and that's why I criticized her for it, mainly bashing her. I didn't know it was wrong at the time, and I was young way back then, and I didn't know any better. Pacifica started. Since I'm a rich girl, I kind of did become popular and, and off of this school. When I started to hang out with my friends who were rich as, as me, I kind of bullied people because of it. Were you bullied as a kid? That sometimes can affect people who were bullied in the past, Wendy said. I was kind was as a little girl. It was because I was in Mabel's shoes many years back. People made fun of me over girly things. I would cry almost all the time because of the bullying. So one day, I fought back and it worked for a long time. But now I can see why I didn't have any friends in the first place. But after getting to know Dipper, I kind of started be to be nice to him, Pacifica said sadly. I knew Dipper since I was 15, and he and Mabel were both 12, and we got along just fine, Wendy replied. Patty Pacifica on the shoulder. Ever since I started to hang out with the wrong people, I started to be a, becoming a spoiled brat over the fact that my family and I were very wealthy. Now I could see what happened. I made Mabel cry before and Dipper snapped at me for it. He called me a bully back then and he was just trying to be a good brother. Pacifica began to have tears in her eyes as the past was hurting her. Don't cry. I'm sorry you went through that that a lot. Just because you and your family are wealthy, it doesn't mean that you're better than anyone, Wendy said comfortably, while hugging Pacifica. Money isn't everything. What matters is that you have everyone that looks up to you. Ah, uh, you're right on that. Money isn't everything, I guess. I have been a greedy bitch, liking money more than my friends and family, Pacifica sniffled. Did you apologize to Mabel and Dipper for that behavior in the past? Wendy asked. Dipper, yes, but I have. But for Mabel, I didn't apologize to her yet. Mainly because I thought she would still hate me, Pacifica said sadly. Mabel wouldn't hate you for it. Her feelings were hurt when you bullied her in the past, but I know she wouldn't hate you for that. She's a forgiving person at heart. I know this because I've seen her forgive people at times. Even Robbie, when he talked shit about Dipper behind his back, Wendy started, but paused for a moment. But Robbie, however, he was kind of tough to forgive someone. He may seem creepy and weird, but he's improving his behavior at times, as he's becoming a better person. I never knew your ex was an asshole. Dipper told me about Robbie picking on him. Not to mention that he was a jerk towards you. And sorry to sound harsh like this, but you're better off with Dipper than Robbie, Pacifica stated. I have to agree with you on that. Robbie even lied to me when Dipper confronted me about it. I took Dipper's word for it to heart because he was telling the truth and I believed him, Wendy said. I'll apologize to Mabel tonight and from now on I'm, I will no longer be a spoiled brat or always put everyone down. I'm going to redeem myself for the better. And as for the island, we have each other and we have to work together, Pacifica announced, drying her tears from her eyes. That's my girl. I found some vines. Want to grab some? Wendy said, handing Pacifica a machete to cut down the vines to use as rope. Well, sure, and I'll cook dinner tomorrow night, Pacifica said, cutting down the vines with the machete that Wendy had gave her to use. Later in the evening, Pacifica and Mabel were both by the campfire, near their hut. Uncle Stan was making dinner with Wendy and Dipper's help. 
The two girls were together by the fire. Mabel, I have something to say, but please don't hate me, Pacifica said, catching Mabel's attention. Sure, what is it? Mabel asked. I want to say that I'm sorry, Pacifica replied, before pausing for a moment. I'm sorry for being a bully to you and picking on you in the past. I didn't apologize before because I thought you'd still hate me for it. Wendy told me that you were bullied as a kid, and just because you and your family are rich, Mabel said, I guess sometimes being rich can turn people into spoiled brats. Yeah, it can, and I regret being a bitch towards you and your brother. I guess I was more focused on being popular, but when I started to put others down, I felt better than ever. But now I regret doing that to you. I'm sorry for that, Pacifica sighed sadly. If you choose not to forgive me over what happened in the past, I can't say I, I blame you. Of course I could forgive you, Pacifica. All we have is each other on this island now. I guess you could say that we didn't really get along at first, Mabel said, forgiving Pacifica. But now we'll put our differences aside and do what it takes to get off this island. But however, we will no longer bully people. It's a deal. I'll redeem myself for the better, Pacifica replied, hugging Mabel. After Wendy, Mabel, Dipper, and Pacifica went to bed after supper and free time that night, Grunkle Stan was drinking some rum by from the barrel, and as he was in a drunken state, he fell asleep near his bed in the hut, still feeling wasted from drinking. Early the next morning, it was around 6 a.m., when Grunkle Stan woke up. He was still in a drunken state, and he walked towards the ocean. He started to swim to the other side of the island, that was only a couple of feet from the of the ocean away from him. He swam for a long time, and soon something will happen to him. Mm -hmm.